Hello, this is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate, and today I want to talk about the housing market with you. So specifically in Northeast Ohio, um, I live in Strongsville, but I also cover a lot of, or all of Medina County. Um, and basically this is a question I get all the time is how is the housing market doing? Um, is it starting to slow down? What are my predictions? Different things like that. And basically it comes down to three factors. So you're always going to have your supply and demand. So those are the first two factors. And then the third factor that comes into play is inflation. Um, so those are the three big topics. Um, with that, I'll actually break it down a little bit today. So demand, uh, I'll start with that first because that is really, um, it's driving a lot of things right now, but People have heard of the rising or rapidly rising mortgage interest rates since the beginning of the new year. And that is definitely true. And I actually noticed a slowdown, at least with my clients um, and in my sphere, what, probably about a month or so ago, so in April. Um, and it's actually starting to pick back up again. And I don't know if that's because there was more shock in the beginning where people just they were thrown off especially the people who had been looking for a long time um and they had you know their interest rate locked in at you know three percent and suddenly it's at five or five and a half percent but with the mortgage interest rates kind of leveling off over the past couple of weeks i've definitely noticed a big uptick again in activity um, so we're seeing that partially, I think it's because people realize, hey, if I have to move or if I want to move and I'm in the financial position to do so, I'm going to. Um, and also rates are what they are right now. Um, we were definitely very fortunate to have low interest rates for such a long period of time. So uh, basically since the pandemic happened and realistically that was not healthy. Um, that was driving up prices more than it should have. So with us at, you know, between five and five and a half percent right now, some experts are still projecting and predicting that that's going to go up. So a lot of people I think are just saying, hey, it's a one-way street. If I need to refinance in the future, or if, you know, rates go down, I can, but I might as well lock in this rate before it potentially goes up again. So that's the one thing. The other thing is, um, you know, some more houses did start hitting the market there in uh, late April and then May as well. And I think that was some of the sellers starting to potentially fear uh, losing out on capitalizing on this market um, because it is still a seller's market, but uh, the tides are definitely starting to shift a little bit. So. For those of you who were wondering, okay, are mortgage interest rates going to um, affect housing prices? Because as interest rates go up, especially that rapidly, um, purchasing power goes down. So there are less qualified buyers for certain price ranges then. Um, the answer, the short answer to that is yes. Um, demand has gone down. And I actually just read an article that um, as far as mortgage applications to purchase a home, so not for refinancing, but to purchase a home, uh, are down 10% year over year compared to last year. So the demand is definitely lessening just because people who were on the fence or who didn't need to buy have decided to maybe sit it out for a little bit. So down 10% for purchase applications, and you'd think, okay, well, with less or fewer buyers looking to buy, that's going to decrease the purchase price amount. And we actually haven't seen a significant dip for that yet. Um, it might be coming um, as far as a correction is concerned. So whether it just takes a few months to catch up or not, I'm not sure. But the way I always describe it to other buyers and sellers is essentially you know, last summer when we were seeing, you know, sometimes 10 offers or more on a property 
even if half of those buyers disappear, if you're still getting five offers, it's, I mean, it's still a, a very strong seller's market there. So that's essentially what we're looking at um, on that end. And then the other thing that really affects housing prices in addition to demand is the other side of the equation, which is supply. And I did just recently run numbers. I haven't tabulated them yet uh, for basically the main areas that I serve. So I just did it by school system. I did uh, Strongsville, Brunswick, Medina, Highland, Buckeye. Um, and there might have been another one that I mixed in there too. But essentially, I ran active listings. So basically, how many houses are listed for sale? And I broke it down month by month. Uh, for the past five years, and I'll post that uh, probably within the next day or so. And then I also did um, sales broken down by month, so closed out transactions month by month in those same areas uh, over the past five years. So essentially, um, what you'll see when I post that or when I show that is that the available houses for sale are still way down. So even though demand has decreased 10% year over year from, you know, June 2022 to June 2021. Um, we're actually seeing a decrease for houses that have been listed for sale as well. So it kind of offsets it a little bit in that regards. So that's where, again, you're not going to see as drastic of a price decrease as you may think. The other reason why I don't think that you're going to see as drastic of a price decrease is for the third factor, which is inflation. Um, so inflation is currently about 8% or so. And basically what that means is it's going to cost more money to buy the same item as it did last year. So you see that with gas prices going up, with food prices going up. Uh, with everything, and some of that is due to the uh, the Fed tinkering and trying to simulate the economy before, and then some of it is just going to be due to supply chain issues. But we're seeing the same thing for housing. Um, you know, we already have not enough supply with existing homes going on the market, but we're actually not seeing a ton of new construction homes being built either, or not enough. I should say. So we're still, we still have that supply constraint. And again, if prices for everything else are going up on average about 8.3%, I think was the last number, um, you know, housing prices are going to go up as well. So that's where, you know, between the supply and demand and then inflation, I think that you'll still see that housing prices are going to stay basically where they're at, um, at least for the near term. And then the only caveat I would have for that would be on um, more like starter homes and entry level homes, just because inflation does not hit everybody equally. Um, so when I say that, I mean people who are either lower income earners or fixed income, uh, you know, whether they're on social security or anything like that, um, inflation is going to hit them a little harder just because, you know, gas is say five bucks a, a gallon right now. And that doesn't matter if you make $50,000, $150,000 or $250,000. So if you're driving, if you're eating, which everybody is, and obviously you can scale back what you're driving and what you're eating, but um, as a relative percentage to their income, it's going to affect the low income earners more. And that's where the starting or starter houses, um, you know, entry level price points are going to see fewer and fewer buyers. And I think that they will get affected by it um, before some of the, you know, five, six hundred thousand dollar properties end up. So that's just, uh, that's kind of my view on the market driving. So figured I'd give a little, uh, a little bit of my perspective and hopefully the video wasn't too bad for you. Thanks.